In this video, we're going to see how do we compute confidence intervals for the mean. And what you're going to see is that the process for calculating confidence intervals for the mean is almost identical to confidence intervals for proportions. You're going to start by identifying all of the numbers given to you in your problem. Then you're going to calculate your critical value and then find your margin of error and then add and subtract your margin of error from the point estimate and wrap everything up in a complete sentence. The only difference is this time we're using a different formula to find our critical value and then a slightly different formula to get our margin of error because our point estimate is different. But you'll see these are very, very similar processes and once you get it once, it's not too bad to do it again. So our example, suppose a simple random sample of 150 students is drawn from a population of 3000 college students. Among students sampled, the average IQ score is 115 with a standard deviation of 10. What is the 95% confidence interval for the mean student IQ? Well, this one you've got to read it carefully because it gives us two pieces of, pieces of information about the college, but what we care about is the sample size, M, which is 150. So this college has a population size of 3,000, but only 150 were sampled, so that is our N. And then they tell us that our sample IQ, which is X bar, our sample average IQ is 115, and our sample standard deviation, which is S, is 10. And then we're looking for the 95% confidence interval. Okay, so visualizing our graph, the middle of this graph has 95% of the area. So the two tails left over on either side is going to have the complement, which is 1 minus 0.95 or 5%. And what we did last time is we divided that in half to get the area of each tail. So we could say that the 0.05 divided by 2 would give us 2.5% on either side. But what we'll see is that we have a uh, different function for the confidence intervals for the mean, which uses the area of those two tails combined. So we don't really need to split it up into each tail. You can if you really want to, but you don't need to. So to get our test statistic or our um, critical value, which is T alpha over 2, we're going to use the t dot inverse dot 2t function. And this is asking for what is the area of the two tails together, which is 0 0.05, and then degrees of freedom, which is n minus 1. So in this case, our n was 150, degrees of freedom would be 149. So our critical value is 1.9760. Our margin of error is our critical value times s divided by the square root of n. So our margin of error again is our critical value, which is t alpha over 2, which was the 1.976 number, times s, our sample standard deviation, which was 10, divided by the square root of our sample size, n, which was 150. And then to get our lower and our upper confidence interval boundaries, we take our x bar, which is our point estimate, minus e, and then x bar plus e. So we can say that based on our sample, we are 95% confident that the mean IQ score at this college is between 113.3866 and 